Tonight I'll reach out and touch the sky In the city of angels Feels like I'm coming home With my head up in the clouds I am searching for something That's where I'm staying tonight, and that's where I'm eating tonight. I'm back in Vegas for two days to work on a pretty cool project I'll tell you guys about later. Tonight, after spinning the Vegas Buffet Roulette, we're gonna go yeet and review the buffet at the win. Although, my heart belongs with the Bacchanal. I still think it's the number one buffet in Vegas. I really do wanna try them all. And I haven't been to the win again in about three, four years. Let's see if it's good. Don't really remember. Must have not been that impressive. The toughest thing about walking down the strip, going to a buffet that's kind of out of the way, is just ignoring all the awesome food you're passing along the way. A couple of tips if you've never been in Vegas before. If you see like a dirty, creepy looking Elmo, or Captain America, or girls that look like they should be on a show somewhere, or people slapping cars together, walking towards you, just stay out of the way. That advice also applies to New York. The Wim Buffet is actually if I remember correctly, the first Vegas buffet I ever had. This was like 12 years ago, no money. And I was here with uh, with a startup. This is back when I was working at comic books. Saved up a bunch of money, came to Vegas, went to the win. And at that point, it was the biggest buffet I've ever seen in my life. And I remember seeing the dessert section after I was done eating. And I was just mesmerized. Sunset slow, hey, you know you should stay for the Not too shabby, especially the steaks. Let's go get our first round. All right, round one, starting with some tacos and little bits of teensy things that comes in small bowls. Tacos, I got a sada and I got some pork. Mm, a point for this place on the tacos. This is tremendous. The beef, it's charred, but it's not dry on the inside. Perfect amount of seasoning and spices. Nice burst of juice from the tomatoes. Mm, not disappointed at all. Pork tacos look a little dry. Mm, perfect. Man, everything fresh. Guacamole. Only thing is, don't overstuff yourself on this. It looked really good, that's why I got it, but this is a hefty portion of food. Mm. Roasted shishito peppers. Oh my God. I know they didn't have to really cook this, but this just being on the buffet makes the buffet better. Take a bite of your taco and then bite of this. That'll let your tongue on fire in the most delicious way possible. I mean, the tacos are good, but those peppers made my night. After my trip to Japan, I started loving tuna. Mm. Oh, sesame sauce, love it. The sauce that they soaked the soba in, nailed it. Really, I can't believe I'm raving about these little finger foods that I got, but. Oh, even the other choke is good. Now I'm in trouble. There's a lot of things right now that I want second helpings of. And I haven't even been like through a tenth of the buffet yet. I'll be honest, my first buffet walkabout, I wasn't all that impressed. Things look a little dry, not that appetizing. There's a lot of things I didn't even film because it's just kind of 
It didn't look good, but the things I got tasted marvelous. I think the big thing on this buffet are the steaks. Let's go get some. This is the fattiest piece of cha shu I've ever seen in my life. This is definitely the sumo of the cha shu world. All fat, charred, roasted, glistening, sweaty pork belly. Oh man, look at that New York strip too. Round two is exciting. Only thing I didn't get was the tri-tip and the leg of lamb because they have new ones coming out. I want to wait till I get the absolute newest one. But this fatty cha shu is just like, I mean, I don't mean to body shame it, but I've never seen something so fatty in my life. Oh my God. Out of this world. Not a lot of you might like this because it is so fatty. This is basically like fatty pork Big Mac, and the fat would just be the buns with a couple thin sections of lean stuck in between. Oh my God. It's sweet. It's just the juiciest thing you can ever imagine. Slightly sweet. When you're eating that, you need something. You need like a roasted jalapeno. You need something spicy to kind of take the fatty edge off. Otherwise, three bites, you're done. Oh, perfect. They had buns for this. I was like, eh, I don't need a bun. No. I'm thinking I need a bun. Let me go get a bun. This is like the gut punch of pork bellies because as soon as you bite it and you swallow that thing, your stomach feels like something just bombarded it. It's so good, but it's gonna feel really, really, really oily and fatty. Bite of the pork belly. Bite of the shishito peppers. Oh, to the rescue. Mm, gotta give it up for their steaks. I love eating steaks where I can taste the fire. And that has the perfect amount of smokiness. That is so tender. Mm. Check this thing out. The beef rib. Oh. They didn't just take a pork rib, splash some salt on it, and put it on the fire. This team, you can taste the salt, you can taste the cumin, and when cumin is added to any sort of barbecue meat, you know that's gonna be good. This thing now tastes like something I would probably find in the Middle East with all these spices. And it's fall off the bone tender too. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. All this, you gotta eat it with the peppers. Don't let the meat make your stomach overly greasy. You don't want that. That's gonna make you eat less, and trust me, this is not a cheap buffet. You wanna eat as much as you can. Try tip. Oh yeah, not the most tender of steaks, but it's juicy and there's a ton of flavor. Wonderful seared crust, so all that juice is just contained in the steak. The most tender cut is definitely the prime rib, but for sure the most flavorful one. Mm. This plate is just like going against every fiber of my buffet economic loving bean. I got pasta, I don't know. I just, after the fatty pork, I needed I needed some carbs. And then I got the meatloaf, which I remember was something I got like 10 years ago. They still have this here. I remember this dish specifically getting it and loving it. And then when you get some meatloaf, you gotta get some potatoes. It's kind of spiraled out of control from there. Mm. The meatloaf is still good. Very homey, super soft. I go through these like food, obsession stages where for like months at a time, I'll be obsessed with one particular type of food. So I went through my clam chowder stage, my buffalo chicken wing stage, which took me all the way to Buffalo. I had my burger stage, my pizza stage, and I had a meatloaf stage. Believe it or not, I was obsessed with meatloaf. I was buying meatloaf everywhere. I was cooking meatloaf at home. And that's when I came here and I had this. Probably one of the most tender, zesty versions of meatloaf I've ever had. That's why I saw it just now, how to get it. My potato is not too bad. Oh, this is taking effort. It's a little T-bone of lamb and it's not coming off easily off the bone.
That was a lamby tug of war. The flavor's good. And once you can wrestle a piece of the meat away from the bowl, it's not bad. I think this piece, it might've been sitting there a little too long. The buffet lamp of death strikes again. So Wynn has something that no other hotel buffets have. It's like a wheel of hash browns. They call it potato pancakes. It's basically hash browns and there's different toppings on top. So I got ricotta cheese and pomegranate. It tastes like ricotta cheese and pomegranate sitting on some hash browns. It's not bad, it's freshly cooked hash browns. It's pretty crispy and buttery. We have entered officially the seafood portion of my meal. In terms of cold seafood items, it's not a lot of stuff. I think on seafood night here on the weekends, there's some king crab, but otherwise it's snow crab. There are some actual seafood dishes we're gonna get to in just a little bit, but I gotta take a little break from uh, eating by eating some snow crab. Seriously, I'm not even kidding about this. Eating crab at a buffet is how Asians take a break, rest up so they can go eat more food. Asians are so devastating at eating all-you-can-eat crab. When Red Lobster first offered all-you-can-eat crab, I think this was back in around 1997 or 96, the first night they offered it in a little town of Quincy, Illinois, my uncle went there and made sure that was the last time they offered it. I'm not really proud of my uncle for doing that, but I'm also kind of am. They have a seared red snapper, which again, I think would have been good if it just came out of the pan. Yeah, fish is not the best thing here. Mussels are good. Fish, really, not so much. Actually, mussels are really good. I was trying to wait for them to bring out like a, like a new pan of fish so I could taste it, but it didn't really happen. So probably not the best example of their fish, but as it is, no good. I would skip it. Yeah, this plate's a little small. Let's go to the main entree side and grab a bigger plate. Upside down pineapple cake. Yeah. Banana sticky toffee. Can I get a soy chocolate chip? Also a uh, vanilla mango custard. Dessert is one of the strong suits of win. I feel like they have one of the best dessert sections in Vegas. Mm. This upside down pineapple cake is speaking to my soul right now. Toasted, partially caramelized pineapple piece on top and just the most moist, tender, angelic cake on the bottom. Gonna add a little bit of the soy ice cream. Oh, I can eat 50 of these. Oh, so good. Mm, love that. Mmm. A few moments later. Oh, I had to go back and get a couple more. It's banana sticky toffee, and it is just the yummiest thing. It's like banana bread with a little crispy outside layer. I don't know why I love banana desserts so much. Maybe it's because I'm a monkey, I'm not sure, but I do. I do love it. Mmm, mmm. A lot of places in Vegas, a lot of buffets, they have a huge dessert section. Not all the items taste good, they look good. Carrot cake, so good. Creamy, a little bits of carrots, smooth and buttery. This upside down pineapple cake might be my favorite dessert item on any buffet in Vegas. Mm. This dessert, this is what Vegas is all about. It's so simply good. But you know you're gonna pay for this later. That's probably one of the highlights of this buffet for me. Mm. Good lava cake too. All right, let's talk about it. Has the win become a better buffet since I ate here last about four years ago? I think so. They definitely put a lot of emphasis on their steak and it shows. Tri-tip, great. Prime rib, deliciously melty. Best food here might just be the tacos. Most uniquely delicious food item here is probably that really fatty pork belly. I mean, I never had anything like that before in my life. Never something that fatty and that melty. I mean, that thing tastes like it's been sitting in a sauna for the last year. This place, I still maintain, has one of the best dessert sections of any buffet in Vegas. And if this was just a buffet sitting somewhere with no competition, I would say it'd be pretty spectacular, but this is Vegas. Every hotel has a buffet. 
There's a lot of big names out there, so let's compare it to some of the other ones. Can it touch Bacchanal Buffet as the best in Vegas? I'm sorry, not even close. The steak was good, it was juicy, it was perfectly charred, but it doesn't come close to the Wagyu that Bacchanal serves. That by far is the best steak of any buffet in Vegas. Seafood-wise, I know this is not the seafood night, but the raw section, the selections, it still really doesn't compare to Bacchanal's at all. So in general, out of five, I will probably give this place a 3.8. And of all the buffets I've had so far, I think it's definitely better than the Wicked Spoon, but far below the Bacchanal. Just like a lot of other Vegas buffets, the people working here are the sweetest people, the cooks, everybody, nicest people. And I didn't try some of the dishes like the roast chicken or the turkey, because it just looks bone dry. The overall selection is good, but it definitely does not have as many items, again, as the Bacchanal. I swear I don't work for the Bacchanal, I'm just being completely unbiased here. That is still, by far, the best buffet in Vegas. It's not close, guys, not even close. So the highlights here, pork belly, tacos, the steak, the shishito peppers, and definitely that dessert bar. Like I said, I do feel like their dessert here at the Wynn is probably one of the best of any buffet in Vegas. And the price is pretty comparable, about $50. So there you go. That's my review of the Wynn Buffet here in Las Vegas. Guys, let me know what you think. If you've been here before, how do you like this buffet? What is your favorite buffet? Do you agree with me that the Bacchanal is the best? Or what do you think has the best buffet in Vegas? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.